Are you chosen or will you just call? What are you willing to surrender unto a higher? Are you willing to put your mishaps to the side for the sake of the world? Are you willing to change how you talk for the sake of the lost sheep who are going to examine your workish behavior and blame it on your God for raising you? With the way you carry yourself to tell the lost sheep who want to come into the knowledge of this truth or stay far away from it. Will the way you carry yourself compel your fellow group to want to grow strong and go harder in this truth or will it make them want to fold? Ponder on that a minute. Let it marinate. Smiting a horse so that the rider fall backward. Is that you? Yeah, well, listen. And your fellow man or woman look at you. Who are they going to see? When your neighbor look at you, will they see you? And will they see the most high in Christ? That's your showmanship. Your showmanship. Showmanship. Your show. You are a showman. Man. Man. Be he followers of me. As I. All right, y'all. Hello. We back. We back. We back. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and knock this next thing out, this next segment. Oh, man, I can't wait. I've been waiting to do this. Uh, what? I tell you what, man. I never saw who's still going through change. Oh, man. Back to the hospital. Go to a, a different VA this time. It's a better one. Get up in there. They do all these tests and everything. They tell me what's going on with me. It's not as bad as the enemy was trying to keep, you know, trying to put these things in my mind. But then turn right around. Get ready to leave. I had to stay there three days. Get ready to leave. And then what happened? They're going to tell me that somebody on the floor has COVID and I might be exposed to COVID. This is crazy, but I understand what's going on. Don't think for a minute when you start doing this walk. I'm just telling y'all this. I really don't like to tell my business, but it don't matter. I'm just telling y'all this because when you start trying to do this thing the right way, or if you, if you, if you start doing this thing and take your hand off the plow, things going to come your way. Sometimes it's meant for you to repent. Sometimes it's made I mean, for you just to see how strong your faith is. But you will be tested. This is not going to be like a Christianity thing. You're going to be tested. Things going to come your way. Every, every eye is on you to see how you're going to handle it. If you're going to stay strong, if you're going to keep pushing forward. You understand what I'm saying? These are the things that we have to do no matter what. If you signed up for this, or if, whenever you get ready to sign up for this and get immersed, you got to understand it's a covenant. It don't change. Be in a war right now, you will be tested at all times. The book says that, that, that man is, con is tested continually. Just know that. Especially for y'all that's trying to come out of this Christianity that been coming up here. You got to understand it's not going to be like it was when you was a Christian because you have a different Elohim that's blessing you. Different Elohim, that's, that's, you know, because you got to understand, we're going to get to Satan too. I mean, I'm almost finished with that whole lesson, so I'm going to get that up here for y'all. I just want y'all to, I'm just telling y'all this, because I want you to stay encouraged no matter what. And if you're doing the right thing, you don't have anything to be afraid of. Nothing. I just wanted to put that out there. So, as we get ready to get started, as always, giving all esteem to the Father of Yahuwah for his blessings. His mercy and his kindness. The best friend that I ever had. I love you, Father God. Thank you for all things, the good and the chastisement. When you bring that too. I just want to tell you that. We all love you, Father. That's why we up here trying to do these classes and trying to be obedient to your will. That's what this all is about. The will of Yahoo. You got to remember that. We're going to get into the third leg of this class. Uh, but again, we thank you for uh, Yahusha Hamashiach. We also thank you for Ruach HaKodesh, grandmother, mother spirit, that guides us, nourishes us, shows us the way. We ask, Father, that you forgive us for our wrongdoings, our wrong thinkings, and our wrong walking. Anything that is not conducive to your will, 
is what we ask, Father. Please hear us. We ask, Father, that you touch everybody that came up here, open their eyes and their ears so that they can understand. So we ask these things as always. In the mighty, mighty name, Ahusha Hamashiach, our King, our Redeemer, our Savior, our everything. Ooh, we, I mean, the love gift that you gave us. Wow. Once we get done with these classes, you're going to understand what that really, really means. So, uh, again, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, in Yahushua's name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, I couldn't wait to get back up here. Boy, I was itching. But I got a good one for you. I'm going to keep going with this dispensational thing. Sons of the Stone Congregation presents destroying dispensationalism, part three, the enemies of Yah's law. All right? First place we're gonna go to, hey little king, is we're gonna go to Isaiah 34, 16. I don't like to do a lot of one one liners kind of, but sometimes it's necessary. But you can always go back and read the whole chapter. But I, I like that. I mean, I really like to do that, but I can't because you know, most people's time is valuable to those that don't really understand. Some of y'all probably can't, you know, want more and more. I can understand that. I, that's how I used to be. So Isaiah, well, I'm still like that. Isaiah 34, 16 tells you, seek you out of the book of Yahweh and read. And one of the main things that we don't like to do. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. In my mouth it has commanded. In his spirit it has gathered them. I keep that in mind main thing about this is you have to read. I pick up that Bible, get up early in the morning, like I've been telling y'all, peel them pages, peel, peel the leaves of this tree, because, you know, I don't know if I showed you that yet, because this book, it's, it's, it's like it to the tree of life. And these pages are leaves. Best believe it. If you keep studying this book, you will find life. All right, let's keep rolling. Now, what is the Father's will? Let's go to John 4 and 12. Now, we, we can read this one. We're going to be doing some reading today. Not a lot, but we're going to be doing some reading. John 4 and 34 says, Yahusha says to them, my meat, in other words, my food, the thing that nourishes me, the thing that helps me exist, is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work, his work. That's going to be a very, very important word. This, this word work, right? The same way meat gives you sustenance, sustenance, the will of the Father gives us life. We're going to get, you know, and we always do. We're going to keep rolling. Strong's number G2307. Thelema, right? That's Greek. What one wishes or has determined shall be done. This is the word will of the purpose of Elohim to bless mankind through Christ, of what Elohim wishes to be done by us, commands and precepts. Number two, will, choice, inclination, his desire and his pleasure. So by us doing his will, this gives him pleasure. This is what we gotta understand, right? We wanna please the Father. This is the will of Ab Yahuwah, Exodus 18, 19 through 20. Let's go there. I got it up here, but still, we can still turn that. You might see something else along the way. A lot of these things I've been putting up here because I got a lot of slides to go through today. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to do every last one of them, and then I got to do another class right behind this one. And it's going to be on the Pharisee. That's going to help you out a whole lot. So, Deuteronomy, I mean, Exodus 18, 19 to 20. It says, Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel. This is a very, very important word right here. This word counsel. Blow it up for you. And Elohim shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Elohim word, that thou mayest bring the cause to Yahuwah Elohim. Thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk. That word must is very powerful. And the work that they must do. Here we go again. Word work. Word work is going to be very, very, I mean, it's going to be very, very important as we get down the road. I'll show you these works. 
again, we talk about other type of work. This one specific work that he's talking about here, a couple of things, but a couple of things fall up under that umbrella of work, right? And he's saying that they must walk, must, must. And the work they must do, right? Leviticus 19 and 1. We're going to read a little bit prior down to verse 3. And Yahuwah speaking to Moses, saying, speaking to all the congregation of the children of Israel. Remember from the first class we had in this series on dispensationalism, we know the congregation means the church, right? Of the children of Israel, saying to them, You shall be holy, for I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, am holy. You shall fear every man his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbath. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. So again, these are laws, these are ordinances. But I mean, I just can't understand what's wrong with that. I shouldn't fear my mother or my father. That's part of the problem now. Telling people they don't have to keep these commandments or these laws, not being definitive, right? Boom, here it is, these kids are out of control. And they don't respect their parents. They don't respect anybody. And anybody that's out in this world, you understand that, right? Leviticus 20 and 26, you shall be holy unto me. I, Yahuwah, am holy and have severed you from other people that you should be mine. And that's the problem that we have because we don't understand this. He separated us from other people so that we shall be his. And since we are his, this is why we are going through changes that nobody else seems to be going through. Once we get this in our heads, we're going to get it together. Right? We belong to him. Not anybody else. We belong to him. Anybody else can come if they want to. But we, the, the Negro in America, you and in the islands and uh, all over the Caribbean and some places still in Africa, they still sit. Right? You belong to him. You belong to him. This is why when you look around, once that's in captivity, you can always tell they're being oppressed because this is what he said he was going to do to all his children. That and all that that have the ancestors that made a covenant with him. Just that simple. All right. Still getting warmed up. Y'all know how I do when I get warmed up. Hebrews 2 and 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. So this is what Paul is saying. See, Paul gonna bring this up into the New Testament for y'all New Testament people out there. And if you don't understand, if, we, if this is throwing you off, go back to the very first beginning. If you're just jumping up here on this one, you need to start at the first video in this series. For if the word spoken by uh, messengers was steadfast and, and ever, transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of the reward. So every, the every transgression and oh, disobedience received a just recompense of reward. So the same way they... That 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 they that when we're gonna show you that they that they received the reward for what they did, we're gonna get the same thing. But we the church that's now showed you that first video. This is the renewed church. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Which at the first began to be spoken by Yahuwah and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. See? Elohim also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and with and gifts of the what Ruach HaKodesh according to his will. So the same thing, just like you had, just like you having a gift for the Ruach you know, at Mount Sinai, they had they had the same opportunity. Remember, we talked about how the wind was blowing, right? The storm and everything, the lightning, the voice. And we go to Acts, boom, a rush of a mighty wind. It's the same thing. Because Yahuwah is not a respecter of person, but this is how it is, right? So he did the same thing with them. Hebrews 4 and 1, let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as to unto them. Boom. See, I keep telling y'all, this is a lot of things in this book people think is brand new, but they not. They not. Right? But the word preached did not profit them, 
not being mis mixed with faith in them that heard it. So even though they, I mean, the word that was preached to them is the same thing we've been trying to teach you up on this up, up on this channel. All right, man. But you got to understand something. See, it didn't profit them. Why? Because they say they believe, but it wasn't mixed with faith. This is very important right here, y'all. I'm sorry about that. That was my neighbor. I'm sitting outside. because I like being outside. And you've been through what I've been through. But sometimes Yahoo got to do things to you, boy, to make you realize and cherish this life. <laughs> so I'm being outside as much as I can because I want to see everything. I don't know if you understand me, but I'm just telling you what it is. So that was their problem. It did not profit them not being mixed with faith. So even though he gave them the ordinance and the commandments and the laws, it still wasn't mixed with faith. And that's what you got to have because, again, we keep trying to point out to you that the law by itself can't save you. You got to have faith, right? And now our faith is in the Mashiach. And at the time, guess what? They had the Mashiach in the spirit. Right, who is Yahuwah Elohim, which we have already proven uh, in, in, in plenty of classes. But if you like, again, if you're just popping up here on this class right here, uh, you might want to go see who is the Almighty. You might need to go watch that class. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, because they was tripping. See, because we're trying to get into that rest too. And one of the ways that we, we get into this rest is we start trying to do the work. Another phase of the work, what's that? Keeping the Shabbat, keeping the Sabbath. That's part of your work. That's part of your work that you must do. Right? For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and Elohim did rest the seventh day from all his work. Where's a certain place that he spake it at? A certain place is in Genesis. In the very beginning, right? And in this place, again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remains that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of what? No faith, unbelief. For if Yahusha, now in the end, I'm going to point something out to y'all. If you're a Jehovah Witness right now, you're up here following this and that, and that, uh, that, made, that, that makeshift book that they gave you, right? That's going to say Yahshua. And we already proved in and, and, and the second part of this lay that, that this, this, this word, this J-man word was what? Was created off of is, or likened to what? Yahshua. See, so a lot of these things they know, but they just not going to tell it. I mean, they'll put it in the book. And then the people saying, well, see, that doesn't really say that's not the Messiah. That's talking about Joshua. No, it's not talking about Joshua. It's talking about the Mashiach. If so, for if the Mashiach had given him rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? See, again, he limited a certain day, saying, In David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. And that's the same thing we're trying to get you to understand right now. Because there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of Elohim. So there remains a day of rest. Which one you which which which, which day of rest are you keeping? Are you keep are you doing the will of House of Time and keeping Sunday, or are you keeping you trying to fulfill the will of the Father and keeping the day that was put forth to you? For he that is entered into his rest, he also has seed from his own work, as Elohim did from his. See, Elohim rested, but you don't want to rest on the day he gave. Let us therefore labor. To enter into that rest, does any man fall after the same example of unbelief? So this is what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to help y'all avoid falling into that same example of unbelief. Because believe me, he killed every last one of them in the wilderness. And right now, we in the wilderness, whether we want to understand that or not. I hope y'all been going up there looking at those videos I told y'all about. But you're going to understand. If you watch all them videos that I, I, I told you about in the last class, you're going to definitely understand. You, in, you, you, you might not want to say you're in the wilderness, but you're somewhere, right? So he's saying, let us, therefore, let us labor. Let us put the work in. Let's do this work, the work that we must do to enter into that rest. Just that simple. Now, First John, second chapter. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandment. So the word keep is what? G number 1097. 
to know, to understand, to see, have knowledge of. He that says, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. That's in 1 John, right? Right? So commandment, G number 1781, to order, command to be done. It's a command. When he gives you a command, it means to be done. And this is how you enjoin yourself. He that says he abideth in him all himself also to walk even as he walked. Who was the he? Mashiach. He kept the feast. He kept the Sabbath day. He did all these things. He, he said he, his work, right? What did he say? The Father's will is his meat. And he's trying to do the work that the Father gave him. So you're supposed to be doing the same thing, right? And the word abideth is G number 3306 to remain as one. So when we try to walk in the way that the Mashiach walked, Mashiach walk and being as he walked in the will of the Father, we got to be trying to do the same thing. So are you confused? Okay, we're going to try to help you with that. Now, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, right? Says, examine yourself whether you be in faith, prove your own self. Know you not your own self, how that Yahushua HaMashiach is in you, except you be reprobate. So, if by now, if you've been going through these classes and you still can't understand this, or you don't believe it, then you might be reprobate. That's not good. Because that, hopefully you're not. I pray that you're not. Because you don't want your conscience seared with a hot iron. Because then you're going to be out here like anybody else, doing whatever they want, and I'm feeling no shame about it, right? All right. Let's keep rolling. First Timothy 4 and 16. Take heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. We got to take heed to the, to, to the doctrine. What doctrine? The Father's doctrine. Because if not, be careful, right? This will cause death. This is what's going to, so it's the same way you walk up on a cobra and you see, a, oh, snap, right? <laughs> you like froze and you're trying to get away because you know that's going to be death. The same thing this man trying to take. Take heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine of the Father and continue in them. But this is how you're going to save yourself and the ones that hear you. Because once you start getting this down in your spirit, get immersed, now you're trying to walk in this thing. That's all you're going to want to talk about, I promise you. But it is. So I'm trying to save myself and for all y'all that's out there hearing me, I'm trying to help you too. All right? Now, Doctrine, Strong's number 13, G1319, teaching, instruction, teaching, that which is taught, doctrine, teachings, precepts, right? Learning, teaching, insight. See, you are following the Father's, the Father's doctrine in the Ruach HaKodesh kid with you. Now you're going to have insight on some stuff, right? Some of y'all already seeing it. That's why you keep coming back up here, right? Instruction, teaching, a thing that's taught teaching power, persuasiveness, right? It ain't got nothing to do with me. Whatever power I'm getting or, that, or whatever words I'm saying that, that y'all keep coming up here, guess what? It's the Ruach HaKodesh because I'm trying to follow the Father's doctrine, right? And again, I always point y'all to Deuteronomy 32 and 2, Strong's H number 33948, this is what it means. It means to learn from him to be taught by him, to get instruction by him. This is what his precepts are. See, again, well, I'm going to do this part of this, this, this part like this because I want you to understand that it's different parts of the state of law. You got to tell me exactly. What, what are you talking about, man? Come out of precept? Come out of ordinance? Right? Come out of decree? What about, uh, what, is it a judgment? What is it, man? What is it? Because this don't say law. That don't make no sense to me, especially now. If we go through this, it's not going to make no sense to you. Either. You're going to start laughing. Because you're going to be like, okay, here we go. But you're going to have the weapons, you're have the tools. Hopefully, you're taking good notes, going back over this class maybe once or twice, looking at this stuff. Again, I don't care about looking at you no know, numbers on this. I could care less. If one of y'all come up here and get this, that's good enough for me. Right? So Proverbs 4 and 2 says, I, I give you good doctrine. Forsake you not my law. I give you good instruction. Right? Don't forsake my law. I'm trying to give you good learning, right? Don't forsake my law. This is what it is. Now, we're going to do a little jumping around. 
So let's let's go. We're gonna go. Let's 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 look at this word doctrine and see all the places that it's mentioned in the new part of the book. And we're gonna hit a couple of or maybe one 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 or two old places, I guess, maybe one. But uh I tell you what, let's go ahead and start at um let's run it down from Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna go here first, y'all. All right, Isaiah chapter 29. I said we're gonna do a little bit of reading, but trying to make this easy as possible. Isaiah 29 and 13, right? It says, Wherefore, Yahuwah said, For as much as this people draw near with me, with their mouth and with their lips, do I and uh with their lips do honor me. See, they always, oh, I love the Lord, I love this, I, I love uh, I love the most, the most high, yeah, the most high, right? but have removed their mind far from me. And their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. See, I ain't gotta do that no more, man. We ain't gotta do that no more, man. That's old time. Uh, Christ came and did away with all that. We hear that all the time. That's 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 a precept of a man. Well, I, I can eat whatever I want. All I gotta do is pray over. That's the precept of a man, all right? But man, you, this book says don't judge me in a, in a holy day, in a, and a feast day and a new moon. That's that's that, that's not even what that's talking about. Because if you're saying if the person adds, if the next time somebody says that to you, ask them. Then we, okay, so what does a new moon mean? They, they ain't gonna know because that wasn't toward them. That was that was Paul trying to teach people like don't judge another person because uh, if he says a higher, so what? And you say Yahoo, so what? You know what I'm saying? This person is doing a floating Sabbath. Okay, they're doing a floating Sabbath. That's what they feel like they got to do to get salvation. So don't, 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 don't try to, uh, 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 you know, uh, break them down for that. Because at least they're trying to do this thing. Because we all got different levels of understanding. And sometimes you're going to get into something. And uh, then maybe a year later, you find out, okay, man, I was on the wrong thing. I, I mean, I thought I was right. But okay, now the Ruach has showed me this, right? This is what you got to understand, right? And we 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 gonna we gonna get back to this, right? But let's now let's let's do this here. Let's go in order. Let's go next to Romans fifteen and four. This is the problem. See? The precept of men is tearing people up. They don't understand this thing, man. It's it's throwing them off. We're trying to help you not be thrown off. All right. Now let's go to Romans. 15 and 4. And if you've been paying attention, we've been in and out. This uh, The old and the new, showing you how the old and the new lines up, showing you that where they was getting this information from. Romans 15 and verse 4 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Okay? It's just that simple. So, this is why you want to go back to the old part of the book, because that was written aforetime for your instruction, for your learning, for you to have an understanding. And that's what it is. And this is another good scripture when somebody tells you, well, you ain't got to read the old. Book. Okay, so I see why you don't understand, because you haven't read what was written aforetime for your learning. It's really simple, y'all. It's really simple. All right, now let's go to. Uh, what's the next one you want to go to? Let's go to Matthew. I should have went there first. I missed that. But you know, Brother Saul got a birthday coming up. I'll be 60 years old. And I tell you what, I praise God for that. Everything ain't like it used to be. Please, please. And old people used to tell me that. I'd be like, man, shut up, old man. Yeah, he was right. <laughs> Matthew 16 and 12. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And that's what he was trying to see. I mean, and we're going to get into that too. But we're going to break that down when we get to the part, when we get to the Pharisees and the Mashiach. Ooh, we, we're going to break that down. We're going to show you exactly what this means. See, but this is, it goes back again to following the precepts of men. This is what the Mashiach was trying to warn them, man. Be, man, they, watch out for these Pharisees, man. Don't follow their precepts, because they got an oral law and the Mishnah and the Talmud and all these other oral traditions. This ain't going to help you. It's the will of the Father that, we, that you have to have, and you got to come to me to get that. That's basically what he was saying. 
All right, now let's go to 1 Timothy 5 and 17. 1 Timothy 5 and 17. And you know what? I think I've been kind of moving a little bit too fast on some of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start slowing down a little bit. I know everybody might not be as swift as I am in this Bible yet. But you keep practicing, you're going to get there. 1 Timothy 5 and 17. It says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. So if you got an elder and he ain't laboring in this in the father's will or doctrine, he ain't getting no honor. He ain't supposed to get no honor. He's supposed to be like, oh, uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, elder. I, you know, that don't work because he ain't teaching you right. He's teaching you man's precepts. He's not teaching you this, right? But at the same time, according to the law, when you're dealing with an elderly person, you really, when, a, when an older person walks in the room, he's supposed to stand up, right? But it, what it is is respect him, but don't reverence him as being a teacher, is what I'm trying to say, if he's not giving you the father's doctrine. She don't, it's, 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 look, man, I respect you because you're an old cat, you know, but uh, you ain't really an elder, you just elderly. You understand what I'm saying? That, that's it. So I respect you because you're elderly, but you're not an elder, not at all, because you're not teaching me the right thing, right? Now. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, just flip right over. 2 Timothy. And we're going to go uh, 3 and 10. It says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, man of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, and patience. We're going to go back down to one more persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, and, and Lystra what perse uh, persecutions I endured, but out of them all, Yahoo delivered me. I just got done telling you. This is where you're gonna go through some stuff now. You're gonna, you're gonna be tried. And if, you, and if you're wrong, you're gonna be persecuted. He gonna, he gonna chastise, he gonna put that strap on. And that's a good thing, because that means he loves you. And it's gonna hurt whatever it is, but you're gonna think twice about the next thing that you do out of the way, right? I should have hit this one next. Let's go to Ephesians. Chapter four. This is all over this book. Paul telling you this. Uh, 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 Isaiah telling you this. I mean, you go to Deuteronomy thirty-two and learn exactly what the doctrine is. You ain't got to guess on. Not up here. You ain't never got to guess up here. But I'm gonna show you what it is. And like I say all the time, Brother Saul is not perfect. Brother Saul makes mistakes. If I don't keep myself under subjection. Who knows? And I pay for a lot of stuff being stupid too. Or I have. Trust me, Ephesians chapter 4 and 14. Okay, Ephesians chapter 4 and 14 says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, so don't be getting carried away with all these different doctrines. You know what I'm saying? Because people do that. And every week, I mean, I know cats everywhere, not no more, but there's a brother I love very dearly. Love him to death, but when he, uh, and it was crazy how I hadn't seen him in 20 something years. And I ran into him, and uh, uh, he gave me a ride downtown because I was working downtown. I was just about to get on the model, and uh, it was in a, especially at that time, it was easy to be, uh, you know, most people park at the train station or you know, going trying to park downtown is, is a trip. So I, um, uh, I just happened to run into him. And, we started talking, and he and, and y'all pulled him into this thing. Ruach opened his eyes to some things. But boy, for about the first five or six years, man, man, he would call me. We'd be talking every like every month. He was on some new doctrine. He was getting tossed to and fro. Oh man, you know, by all these brand new things. But that's growing pain. Some people do that. Some people don't. But you know, I was patient with him because I love him, and I and I realized that somebody was patient with me every time. I ain't always had it together. Especially in this book, I told y'all before I had to get it. Boy, this brother had to, had to, had to put that. We, we, we went we went sword to sword on the train. Boy, he had he cut me up good. So I went home leaking and bleeding. Said that would never happen to me again, and it has. So it says, uh, uh, so that we henceforth be no more children. Cause we're supposed to be on meat. We ain't supposed to stay on milk, right? But you know people that 
grandma been going to, going to church for 50 years and she's still on the same thing. So she's still a child in the spirit, basically. When you try to talk to her, she can't hear you. See, because you got to dangle some candy in front of her face. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just telling you how it is, right? It is what it is. Some people get it faster than others. And who's to say? Maybe grandma might hear something that might, you know, tickle I me. Mean, I'll, I'll peek her ears. And you can never say what, what the father's going to do. But, he, he, but one thing about it, he got to draw you. If he don't draw you, I don't care what you do. He can, I mean, she can come down here in the flesh and do miracles. They still ain't going to pay you. That henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. See, the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, right? It is, it is what it is. Now we we'll watch verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into a, him in all things which is the head of Christ. So this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to speak the truth to you in love so that you can grow up, right, in Christ. This is what we're trying to, this is why we do these classes, right? We're trying to help some of y'all grow up, the ones that want to grow up. Now you want to stay on milk? Stay on that similac, right? But if you want to want to grow, keep coming up here. We're gonna help. You. Now, let's go to this next one. Let's go to John chapter seven and sixteen. John chapter seven, verse sixteen. Little, little quick hits right here. Like I said, you can always go back and read the whole chapter. You know, you're gonna see a whole lot. I just can't do it. If I can do it like I want, but it could have to be four hours of time. Yeah, you know y'all ain't gonna stay up here for that. I mean, especially right now. I ain't gonna even say that. I'm gonna say I'm gonna try to be smart and come on the Hawks game, but it is what it is. Now, Yahusha answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of Elohim, whether he speak of himself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh the glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moshe give you the law, and yet none of you keep the law? Why go about to kill me? So this is a, it's just the same thing. Same problem he was having back then, we got the same problem now. We're trying to give you this information, and people, people are going to be upset. Some people might have popped up here, and they never came back. But, you know, I don't worry about that. That's something they're gonna have to worry about later. <laughs> All right, let's go to Titus chapter two now. All right, Titus chapter two. Got that little bitty book, y'all. After Second Timothy. All right, Titus chapter two and seven. It says, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. See, that, that, that work works again. But you want the good works and you want to have a pattern of them, right? And doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, like you grounded. You ain't carried away with every wind in doctrine. You grounded in the Father's doctrine and you sincere with it. This is what we have to keep in mind, right? All right, let's keep going. Let's move on. Strong's number H, number 66773. The word sad, right? Or sad. Precept. Command, ordinance, oracle, meaning dubious, right? You gotta be dubious with this thing. Who shall he teach knowledge? And whom, now this is Isaiah chapter 28 uh, and 9, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Go ahead, let's, let's, I'm gonna give you a chance to turn that. Isaiah 28, 9. All right. Isaiah 28. I mean, turn there with you. Other side, we're so glad to be back here doing this for you. I don't know. Huh? Okay. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. But you gotta you, know, you got to go back and forth reading these chapters. I told you about reading from the very beginning. You got to go here a little in the Old Testament, and you got to go there a little in the New Testament. But it is. This is the whole book is what he's trying to tell you. This is how you're going to understand the knowledge. 
this is how you're going to understand the doctrine. By using precept upon precept, command upon land, upon command, right? Ordinance upon ordinance. Here a little, there a little. Okay, let's keep rolling. But they also have air through wine and through strong drink and are out of the way. This is what's happening to our people and other people as well. The priest and the prophet have air through strong drink. These pastors and these rabbis and these priests have all, they air through strong drink. You know, that's what he's talking about. Talking about liquor. Hmm. They are swallowed up with wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. See? This, and all it is, this strong drink, it just all it represents is doctrine, the wine too. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment, right? Because they don't know the judgment. They, they tell you, you ain't got to keep you out of judgment. So they stumble in judgment because they don't have his counsel. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Isaiah 28, 7 through 8. Now, let's jump down to verse 9. Now watch this. Stay yourself in wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink, right? For Yahuwah hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and have chose and have closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers that uh, the seers have he covered, right? We can, if we, wanted, if we wanted to, we can go down to verse 13 and he's gonna tell you how he gonna, what he's gonna do, how he gonna, how he gonna heal you and all these things. That, that's gonna be a lot later. But this is the problem that we have. This is the problem that we have, right? All right. So, uh, our rulers, man, they, they drunk with another man's doctor, but not Yahoo. See? That's the problem we have. <laughs> Just that simple, right? Now, 2 Corinthians 13 and 1. This is the third time I am coming to you, and the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So, when somebody comes to you with a scripture, they need to have that same scripture. They need to show you two or three different places that, that way they can establish the fact that they're trying to tell you. But we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. In Corinthians 13 and 8. Psalms 119 and 42, and the King James Version says, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is true. We've been learning about this. This is not the first time you heard this. So, Somebody says, what is truth? I mean, the truth is the commandment. The truth is the precepts. The truth is the ordinance. The truth is the law. See what I'm saying? What law? You should know by now. I shouldn't even have to tell you where, where to go to show and prove that next, right? All right. Paul's writing is hard to understand. Second Peter 3 and 15. Let's go there. I can read it on the screen, but i like for y'all to keep turning. because That helps you. Get your skills down as far as finding these books. Helps you with that. This is what we want. Now. Get your skills set up. You get out here in these streets and start talking to these people. You have to be quick on the draw. Now, bear in mind that our sovereign's patience means salvation. Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you to with the wisdom that Elohim gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand. And this is the problem that people is having. This is why they, they go off and they, they can't explain nothing to you, but they have a thought because they read what Paul said this, but they don't really understand what Paul is talking about. See? So, you know, so, so Peter is warning you that his letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable, right? Because these people carried away with every wind and doctrine, distort as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. So when they when they telling you these things that you don't have to do, they distort in the scriptures, and it's and really they don't even understand it's to their own destruction because they won't take the time to search this thing out. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, now he's forewarning you, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the what lawless, I mean, that's so the lawless person, and fall from your secure position, but grow in grace and knowledge of our sovereign and savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. To him be glory both now and from forever. Hallelujah. So what is he saying? Peter points out that we must grow in grace. 
you got to grow in this grace thing. Like I, I said that in the last class. It's not just given to you. Like, I'm under grace. No, you got to grow into grace. By doing what? By doing the work. That's how you grow into grace. And when you make these mistakes, that's what the grace is there for. But you got to be trying. To, you got to try to do the work. Right? So, uh, to grow means to increase, become greater. That's G, G word number 18, 830, 837. So, this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to become greater in this world. You're trying to come, become stronger in this world. You're trying to become stronger and greater in the will by doing, you know, uh, 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 doing the will of the Father so that you can teach others how to do that. All right? This is, this is what we're trying to do here, y'all. All right. So somebody that's lawless is one who breaks through the restraint of law. That's by saying, I ain't got to keep no law. They're breaking through the restraint because the law restrains you. It says, look, man, don't do that. Don't touch this. Don't go over there. Don't answer that phone. Put that down. You see what I'm saying? Don't drink that. You know you ain't supposed to be smoking that. You know, I mean, oh, why, why you, why, why, you know, I mean, it, it just points out things to you that you should and should not be doing. So the, the lawless one who said they don't have to even keep no kind of law, right, is one who breaks through the restraint of law and gratifies his lust. It's like when you was looking at that chick, when you was looking at them crab legs. Right? You already been told, you know it's unclean, right? But what do you do? <laughs> Your lust is making you, 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 and now you don't want the law to restrain you from getting a hold of them jokers, especially with that butter right there and that salt, that pepper, and that good old, that melted, that, that, that oh man, that melted butter. Huh? Because you're trying to gratify your lust. No matter what these commandments tell you to do, your mother say, boy, you can't go outside. Look, no, nah, no, nah, son, you know what? You ground. I, I ain't got to listen to you. Okay, we just got done reading the first couple of slides. You're supposed to honor your father and your mother. You're supposed to obey them for, for the young people that's up here. You're not supposed to be doing nothing that they told you not to be doing unless you are lawless and you're breaking through the restraint of the law to gratify your lust, whatever it might be. In these days with these young folks, who knows? So we see restraint is one set of laws to warn and point out to you your love. All right, let's keep rolling. Now, knowing terms, this is gonna be a very important part of this class because this is what most of this is gonna be about. Because I want y'all that know how to screenshot this, screenshot this. For those like that's my age or around my age, you know, you might have to get your grandkids or something to help you with this. But you know, I want y'all to I want y'all to, to, to get these terms down because they're very important. Like this word miss fat, right? Right? Mem, sheen. Pay in the text, Mis misfet, right? It's judgment, justice, and regulations, right? And as we showed you in the last class, everything in creation has judgment and regulations and should be just. Proverbs 16 and 11, just, just balances and scales belong to Yahuwah. All the weights of the bag are his work. So he not gonna cheat you. He gonna, his, his judgments are true and just. Hosea 12, 6 through 7. Therefore, return to your Elohim, observe kindness and justice, and wait for your Elohim continually. A merchant in whose hands are false balances, he loves to oppress. So he don't like those that, that, that cheat. We've been getting cheated a long, long time. He gonna deal with them. Just keep that in mind. See? All right, now let's get to these terms. Mitzvah, commandments. This is what this is what uh, commandments. The Hebrew word mitzvah. They mean precepts, law, ordinances, code of wisdom. Right? Let's go to Colossians two. Colossians two and four. This thing, man, it's 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 so beautiful, it's unbelievable. Now, let's look at this here. Now, this is very important. This is by this is blotting out the handwritten ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Now, I had to hit that one because you have a lot of these. This is what the dispensationalists say that, well, see, right here, he took away the ordinances and nailed them to the cross. But what ordinances is he talking about? Right? And if I, I, I might have touched on that. I know I touched on that on in some of my other classes, 
for, and I might have touched on them on in, in this series, but if not, we're going to definitely get to that. So that might be one scripture you might want to circle. And so that way, and then when we get back to that, you're going to understand that, right? Now, because you have different type of precepts and ordinances, we're we going to, I promise you, we're going to break that down. We're going to break that down. So, that, so here's the next word, chak. Stat, statute, ordinance, decree, custom, commandments, law, civil enactments, described by Yahuwah and enforced by Yahuwah Elohim. Because you got to remember, the same way Mishiach told you he can, his meat is doing the will of the Father and the flesh, please believe it's the same thing when he was Yahuwah Elohim before he was a body was prepared for him and he came to, to this earth as the law walking around. Same thing. So it's prescribed by the Father and it's enforced by the Son. A misfact. I missed that. I don't know how I did that. I don't like that, y'all. I'm sorry. About that. Let me get that right. A judgment. It's a justice ordinance. See? Because see now, this is why I'm, I'm glad that you've seen these, because some of these have Ordinance is all in them. Ordinance is going to be all over the place, see? but that's going to, I'm going to show you why. Show you why in a minute. Decision, court, seat of judgment, crime or punishment, a penalty. So in this sense, in, in this uh, uh, setting, uh, with a misfat, an ordinance could be, it could be a judgment, it could be a crime, it could be a, a punishment for a, a penalty, or a penalty. See, up here, we see that it, it could be a precept, law, or a code of wisdom, right? Down here, the word Hebrew word devar, decree, root of the bar, to speak, declare, command, promise, warn, and threaten. So we know this word decree. That's basically, and we're gonna show you what that means too. But that's when the king is giving a decree. Trust me, it, it, it means he's speaking, and he's he's declaring, or he's speaking, or he's making it known, right? That it's a, this is a command, and I promise you, and that you know it's a promise. Whether good or bad, it's a warning, and and it's, and it's, and he's he's threatening you basically. Do what I say, or else, right? Uh, Mishmareth, and I know people say no, he would never do that. Man, if you if you've been in this class this far, this long, you know that ain't you know that ain't even that that's, you don't even think like that no more. Mishmareth, a charge, watch guard, ordinance. He's an ordinance. It's, the ordinance is it's a charge, it's an obligation to preserve, to keep, guard, or post. See, you got a lot of different type of ordinances running around here. A chaka, right? Ordinance, statute, something prescribed, custom, appointed manners, specific decree, and law. See, the ordinance can be a custom. We're gonna show you that too. All right, so screenshot this, but this is gonna be your cheat sheet. So, you're gonna, so when you start running across these things, when you're reading and studying on your own, you're gonna be like, okay, I know what that is. That that that's a charge. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. That's that right there. That's free. That's the far. Oh, that gotta be a misfit right there. But you say, love my neighbor as I love myself. Love yah, love Yahuwah Elohim with all my heart, mind. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's a judgment. That's an ordinance. See, you're gonna understand. This. That's why I put this together for y'all. Now, thus says Yahuwah. Now, when you hear this, without a doubt, you already know that it's a decree. So anytime he says, thus says Yahuwah, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, and he says, say to the children of Israel right away, that's a decree. It cannot, it, 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 so it's a warning and it's a threat. If you don't do, you know, so when it's, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So it's a threat. So the threat is telling you the do's and the don'ts. The instructions, hear O Israel, and he says that, right? We, we, we talked about that in some of our last classes, right? Hear, O Israel, right? Instruction, don't, do, speak to the children of Israel and say that this is the thus says Yahuwah, right? Hear, O Israel, thus says Yahuwah, their directives, right? Now, let's go to Joshua chapter 23. Look at this thing. I'm gonna try to give y'all some good examples. I don't want nobody to get this. All right. But that's but this is one of the ones you really need to be careful of. We're gonna we're gonna go back to James chapter two, but let's let's get this Joshua out. Let's get this out of the way first. Joshua chapter twenty three. Let's look at verse six through thirteen. 
Be therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses. Now, remember, this book of the law is, a, was, is, a, is some of the ordinances in this book of the law are against you. The book of the law and the book of uh, the covenant, right? Which is the Ten Commandments and the Judgments, right? And uh, Exodus chapter 20 through, verse, uh, through chapter 23, right? Those were the book of that. All that was just the book of the covenant with nothing added. But as people sinned and committed adultery with the golden calf and kept sinning, then Moses started, he kept on writing. He kept on adding ordinance. He adding ordinance. These are added ordinances. And I'm gonna show you how they can be uh, uh, amended or addendum can be put to them. I'm gonna show you that. But, the, but, the, but the, uh, the royal law, the royal covenant in Exodus chapter 20, verse one through 17, ain't nothing you can do with that. That can't be changed. It can't. But this book of the law, this is what the Mashiach came to shield you from. The curses and the and the and the terror that was put on you because of disobedience by obeying him and still now going back to the royal covenant, the, the royal law. But that's what you're supposed to be doing, right? To keep yourself away from this book of the law. But again, I showed y'all before, the book of the law and the book of the covenant are the same book. It just that the Book of the Covenant from, from sin, I got to say this again, had curses and ordinances added because of disobedience. All right. Be therefore courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the Book of the Law of Moses, that you turn out aside therein, to the right or to the left, that you come not among these nations, that, that, that these that remain among you neither make a mention of the name of the Elohim. And through that on the last class nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourself to them, but cleave unto Yahuwah your Elohim, as you have done until this day. For Yahuwah have driven them out before your, your uh, great nations and strong, but as for you, no man has been able to stand before you until this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand, for Yahuwah your Elohim, he it is that fighteth for you, and he that has promised you. Now, we know that uh, this is Joshua talking to the children that came out of the wilderness. I mean, that, that was uh, 20 and under that, that was spared that came out of the wilderness because everybody else didn't make it. And believe me, they got them curses to hold on. You know what I mean? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but they, they, they didn't have a chance. I mean, they had plagues and everything else put on them. But then to see the curses came again after the, after the, uh, the golden calf incident. And once the children crossed over, they was told these things all over again, but this time it was some things added. Before it was nothing added, but now things are being added because of disobedience and because he knows he knows uh, the minds of these people, right? These Hebrews, because it's in our blood naturally just to be crazy. And I don't even know why he chose this, but he did, right? So this is what this is some of the first things that he was telling us. We're gonna read these. I'm gonna show you this. If you would do this, see, but we know it's not even like that now. One, one of us can't chase a thousand of our enemies, right? But three of them can chase a whole crowd of us. Take good heed, therefore, unto yourself that you love Yahweh your Elohim, else if you do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you and shall make marriages with them and go in unto them, and they to you. Well, we see this happening right now. If you say something, oh, you're a racist. Man, we ain't not supposed to be marrying people are supposed to stay with their own people. I'm sorry. I know I sound like a clans or black clansman, but I'm not. I'm just telling you, this is I'm reading this to you. I'm not supposed to be doing these things. But you see it all over the place now. Why? Because time made it fashion. Right? Now. Know for certainly that Yahuwah your Elohim will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps. We see that happening. And you and scourges in your side, scourges, right? And thorns in your eyes until you perish from off this good land, which Yahuwah your Elohim have given you. That's deep right there. But it, it, in other words, it's going to be killing you. And we see that happening too. <laughs> All right. Let's go to, let's, let's, let's go get this James chapter two. When you say things like this, people are like, oh, I ain't coming up here no more. 
Or if you happen to be with somebody of another nation, that's your business. I, I mean, I'm just I'm just reading to you what the book says. I ain't telling you to break up with them. I ain't telling you to leave them. I'm just telling you what Yahoo said. Now you do what you want. With it. That's up to you. If you think I'm wrong, then go do some research on it. I hope that don't stop you from coming up here. But if it does, guess what? So be it. James chapter 2, verse 8 through 13. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. Okay, so this is the fulfilling of the royal law. Some people say, oh, but secret, it's a new law. This is that's the law of Christ. And <laughs> yeah, because he's the one that gave it to you when he was Yahoo Elohim. But if you have respect to persons who commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. But he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if you kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak you, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Ooh, we, Yeah, the law of liberty. We, we, we done touched that before. So yeah, that's not new to y'all. But I would circle that, because I would be like, well, but then what is this right here? The law of liberty. See, you're going to be judged by that. So we know that ain't done away with, right? All right. So, and I hope if I offended somebody, I'm sorry. But I'm like, again, nothing personal. I'm just reading out the book. Now, Exodus chapter 20 uh, uh, through ch chapter 23, right? We know what that is. That's the, that's the, that's the mitfats, right? How to treat uh, Ab Yahuwah and how to treat each other. And let's go to chapter 23 anyway. Let me show you something. We're going to read Exodus chapter 22 through 33. So you can see the rewards that he promised your forefathers. And it's still good today for obedience. It is what it is. And then I'm going to say this too. Some of y'all, you know, you, whoever you done married, you, you, you with them now. So hopefully, you know, that they, they whatever, however, whatever way that you're trying to get this thing and worship Yahoo, I hope they're doing it too. That's, 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 that's strong. And see, that's one of the other reasons why, not just because they're a Chinese person or a Mexican or a white person, it has nothing to do with that, you know, or African. It's the fact that, you know, a lot of, most of the time, Israel gets carried away with their Elohim. That's the main thing he was saying, you know, because, man, they're they, they going to take you away from me. See, and now you're worshiping their Elohim. See? You up in the Methodist church. Oh, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. You know, you a Jehovah's Witness now. I don't know what to say. Anyway, Exodus chapter 23, verse 22 through 23. It says, but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, right? Look at that. Obey his voice and do all that I speak. Then I will be an enemy unto thine enemy and an adversary unto thine adversary. Well, I don't worry about nothing. You do it right. You, you can't touch it. For mine, mine messenger shall go before thee and bring thee into the Amorites and the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Hold on a minute. They're going over taking their pictures of the neighborhood again. All right, but this is pitch black out here. Thou shalt not bow down to their Elohim, nor serve them, nor do after their works, right? Because he already told you the works that you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to be doing after they work by doing the things that they do to please their Elohim. You're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing uh, the works to please your Elohim. Nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. You shall serve, and it, it's not just taking a hammer and breaking them down. You're supposed to use this book that, to, to break that thing out of their mind and it help them. You shall serve Yahuwah your Elohim, and he shall bless thee, thy bread, and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. I know this for a fact. Right? This is the rewards by being, by being obedient. There shall nothing cast their young, nor, or, nor be barren. And you don't have kids in thy land. Right? The numbers of thy days will, I will fulfill. You're going to live a good long life. I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come and I will make all thy enemies turn their backs unto thee. They're going to try to get away from you. 
And I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanites, and the Hittites from before thee. I will drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea unto the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the rivers, uh, uh, let me see, unto the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. You, you know, you ain't doing that right now, right? Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their Elohim. Okay? There's supposed to be no contract with these people. Here you is signing away your soul because you want to be a rapper. Signing away your soul because you want to play in one of their gladiator sports. And then all the other things that goes on behind closed doors for you to get the contract. Crazy. They shall not, I mean, because that's really what you're doing. You're making a covenant with their guy because whatever act they got you doing, Cat Williams told a whole lot about a whole lot of that stuff that was going on. That's why they're trying to destroy that, bro. Talk too much. But that's what you're doing. You, when you take part in these rituals, you know, you see your boy come out there, uh, uh, put the powder on his hands and throw it up in the air and all this. I mean, yeah, I know. Some of y'all, I don't know about some of these older people like me. But some of these young folks, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Then he put the sixes on his eye, looking straight in the camera, and Kobe and them doing it too. All this stuff. I'm like, oh man, man, that boy bad. Yeah, he got got spiritual help too. They shall not dwell in the land lest they make thee sin against thee. But thou serve their Elohim, I will surely be a snare unto thee. And we see this is what's going on. People are snared up with all kinds of stuff. I'm watching the thing on Tina Turner. She a Buddhist. <laughs> Wow. They are contained in statutes and judgments, not ordinances. See, these commandments, they are contained. What well, we just got done reading, this right here, Exodus chapter 20 uh, through 23, right? They are contained in the statutes and judgments, but not ordinances. See, ordinances, so they're not contained in them. But well, we just got done reading what was against you. The ordinance that was handwritten, ordinance that was against you. See, we're gonna get to that. Uh, let's go to Deuteronomy five. Show what I'm talking. About. We just got done talking about that a minute ago. Now, I might sound a little bit off because I'm still kind of, I ain't fully, fully uh, at full strength right now. But it don't matter because I still got to do the work, whether I feel good or not. So what? It's all about the will of the Father. All right, Deuteronomy 5 and 22. See, these words, Yahoo has spoken to all your assembly, all the church, and the mount of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness with a great voice. This was back in Exodus, right? And he added no more, and he wrote them in two tablets of stone and delivered them unto me. That's it. So there was nothing else added. So these right here, these ordinances cannot be changed. In Exodus chapter 20 through 23, you can't do nothing with that because they're set in stone with the Ten Commandments, right? And uh, again, I mean, they're contained in uh, statutes and judgments, not ordinances. Okay? And he, I just got done reading to you. You see that he wrote this stuff down and nothing was added, right? So when I look at the word commandments, I can go to Genesis 26, 4 through 5. It's going to tell me, that what? That Abraham kept the law, statutes, commandments way before Moses was born. Then I can go to John chapter 14 and 21. And then the Mashiach will tell you, if you love me, keep my commandments. It's all there. And the commandments he's talking about is in Exodus chapter 20 through 23. And in here he's telling the children that came through the wilderness, 20 and under. But he, he, he reminded them that their forefathers got this info, the same information I'm giving you. They got the same information at the Mount Sinai with the fire and the wind and the lightning and all these things. And, and Yahuwah Elohim came down on the mount and they heard his voice, right? This is what he's telling them. But there was nothing else added until you did what you did okay? with the golden calf. The forefathers committed adultery. And we know throughout this whole book, the children and their children, children and children, children up to this day, still doing the same thing. Now, let's look at this. Okay, statutes, ordinances, and decrees. 
All right, we got a little book. Your conditions, they have a time element, right? Uh, how to operate, observe, or keep something a prescribed task, right? This is what these are, statutes, ordinances, and decrees, right? We showed you some of the other things ordinances are, but we're gonna kind of break it down a little bit, a little bit more deeper for you. The appointed time, Moed. So this is where you get your feast, feast days. So see, a Seventh-day Adventist say, well, this is why we don't keep the feast of Yahoo, uh, of, uh, of uh, I don't know what they call them, but uh, uh, this is why we know it's not Yahoo. I guarantee you that. But this well, they'll say they'll, they'll say the Most High or the Lord. It's because that's an ordinance. This is, this is one of the handwritten ordinances. No, no, it's not. Uh, the speech days, which are Moeds, those those are not handwritten ordinances. That was after the Golden Calf. We we can go back to Egypt and show you that he, uh, Moses asked Pharaoh. Could he leave so that they can go and have a feast to Yahuwah way back then? So you can't use that. If you don't want to keep the feast, just say you don't want to keep it. But it was here before Moshe, before Moses even wrote anything down. They was already trying to leave Egypt to go out to the wilderness, right? To have feasts, have to worship these feast days, right? For appointed times, Moeds, their feast day, their instruction. It's an ordinance, it's a directive, right? Action prescribed for oneself or resolve. This is what it is. These statutes, ordinances, and decrees. When you see that, my statute, but again, I got this in green because I want you to see that this is a totally different type of ordinance. And see, that's the other thing, all different type of law. That's what's throwing these people off because nobody goes this deep into this. But I'm going this deep because I want you to be boss in this thing. <laughs> I want you to be tight. All right now, let's look at this. In the biggest chapter 23, 1 through 2. Speaking to the children of Israel. What is that? That's a decree. We just learned that. And saying to them concerning the feast of Ab Yahuwah, appointed times, which you have, which you proclaim to be holy, set apart, convocation, gathering, even these are my feasts, appointed times, right? If I went right here in the same scripture, guess what? Guess what's gonna happen? If I, if I use the same scripture, and I, I think I did that to a Jehovah's Witness one day. Came up here on my porch. And I said, well, uh, I, I, I can't remember if they were even, I don't even think they wanted me to touch their Bible. But fortunately, uh, Brother Saul always had some tricks up his sleeve, right? So guess what? I had, uh, I got a Jehovah's Witness Bible. So I said, but see, this is, these are the feasts of Jehovah. Jehovah is saying these are his feasts. How you gonna get around that? I don't have, they don't come by my house. I say it like that. And I'll never be mean. I always be nice. I always be nice and calm because I want them to hear what I'm saying. So that way on that day of judgment, they cannot never say, I didn't tell you. I'm gonna be sweet as pie to you. Cause see, if I got, I, I, I mean, my wife said I should sometimes, I should be this way, but I feel like if I gotta pay for not doing right, everybody that come in contact with me, I want you to pay too. So I'm gonna tell you, just that simple. Now, judgment and ordinance, see, the difference, another type of ordinance. We know it's a directive, we just saw that, but their instruction, we just saw that. But sometimes it's a situational. See, they can be these, these the judgments in which is ordinances, or judgment and ordinances that join at the hip, it could be situational, right? And it could be an addition. We're gonna show you that. But some people, well, you know, the book says we shouldn't add or subtract, right? But we're going to find out what he's talking about. You shouldn't add or subtract from, see? Because some of these ordinances can be added to. We're going to show you that. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. I'm hoping y'all getting something out of this. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 through 3 and verse 15. And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahuwah thy Elohim to observe and do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that Yahuwah thy Elohim will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And all the blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah thy Elohim. Blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of the ground and the fruit of thy cattle and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. All right? And he goes on and on and on. But we can't do that right now because we got to keep moving. Let's go down to verse 15. But 
it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy Elohim to do and to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. These are these other ordinances. This is a situation. These are some of the additions. Because remember, we just got done reading that there was nothing added. But after the people started sinning and started going up, going, going uh, off the path, then he started putting these situations. If you do this, I'm gonna do that. Don't do this, I'm gonna do that. If, if, if. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> let's keep moving. Now, addendum. All right, we still on the if on the if thing. I got the ordinance in red this time. An amendment, addend, addendum is a convenient way to make amendments to an existing agreement. An item of additional material, typically omissions added at the end of a book or other publication. Now, let's go look at a good example of this. Go to Joshua chapter 23. You know Joshua loved Yahweh, right? He gave jo he gave Joshua a charge too now, right? Didn't he? Right, he gave Joshua uh he, he, he gave him a charge too. Remember, he had to take over from uh Moshe. And let, let's go look at that first. So we know Joshua was a man that kept the commandments. He wasn't even playing with it, right? Now let's go to Joshua chapter one first. And let's let's read verse seven through eight. I want to show y'all this right here. This is the charge that he was given. Now, this is what Yahuwah said to him. He said, only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moshe, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart of thy, out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, but then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Well, that's the key right here. You, I mean, it's no respect to person, so that applies to you too, if you want it. All right, let's go look at this Joshua chapter 24. Let's go look at this real quick. Man, I'm uh, starting to feel weird. Anyway, I got to finish this. I'm gonna go lay down after this. Joshua 24 and 24. It says, and the people said unto Joshua, Yahuwah our Elohim will we serve, and his voice will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with, with, with the people uh, that day and set them a statue and an ordinance in Shechem. So look, he done set a statue and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of Elohim and took a great stone and set it up uh, there under an oak and was by the sanctuary of Yahuwah. And Joshua said unto all the people, behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it have, for it have heard all the words of Yahuwah, which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest you deny your Elohim. So the rock, he told you right here that the rock heard and rock, because people don't be thinking these things are alive, but they are. If the earth and the, and the sun and the moon is looking at you, and they're gonna be a witness against you. The whole, everything, everything that's created has life, whether we understand it or not, see that. But we see that Joshua added to this thing. He, he said he came, he, so he said Joshua wrote these words, right? Uh, uh, he, and set them a statue and an ordinance in Shechem. So he, he, he set a statue and an ordinance in Shechem and he added them to the book of the, of the law. He couldn't, add, he couldn't add them to the book of the covenant, but the part when Moses kept writing with these other ordinances that was against them, he added that. He was able to do that successfully. Yahuwah didn't do anything to him. See? But he also told you, we already read, we have, I think we have read, but those who add to this to this book, they, the curses that's in this book and extra curses from Egypt are going to be added. Do you, you see anything happening to Joshua? No. Because this ordinance could be added to. Just like the, the uh, and that's the same ordinances that was against you I mean, not, not just these sets right here, but what Moses wrote after, that's what I'm trying to get you to see, what Moses wrote after Exodus chapter 20 and through 23. After they sinned, he started writing again, these curses, these things that was against you. And animal sacrifice was added. That was against you. 
But when the Mashiach came, boom, what happened? That's your umbrella against these uh, uh, ordinances. These are the ordinances that, that, that was against you, not the, not the Ten Commandments. Anyway, let's look at a charge. And a, a charge is an obligation. It's a specific task or task, instruction, person or personal, I mean, obligation, directors. It's a duty. Ooh, that's very important right there. Okay. But they're really specific tasks or tasks. They're directors. Right? A charge equal obligation. Again, we know what they are. It's going to be specific tasks to persons or persons, instructions, obligations. Like, so let's go look at it. Numbers chapter 18, 8 through 9. Turn there. Jumping around on this one. I'm just trying to make this thing real easy for y'all. Real easy for you. Chapter 18, 18, 19. All right. And it says, And Yahoo was speaking to Aaron and said, Behold, I also have given thee the charge of mine heave offering, all the hollow things of the children of Israel. And to thee have I given them by reason of the anointing, and to thy sons by an ordinance forever. Right? And even in the new kingdom, priests, I mean, we see that Zadok is going to be brought back. Right? And guess what? Zadok is in the line of Aaron. And, and, and the, this anointing is a type of the Mashiach until the reformation. See, so when it says until the reformation, this, we read that scripture, it's talking about this animal sacrifice. See, these things, and, and the, also this, uh, the curses, uh, I mean, that's, that, I mean, in the book of the law. These are ref until the re time of the reformation. This is what it's talking about. These are the things, not anything, not the feast days, not the commandments, not at all, right? Now, let's go to Nehemiah chapter 10. Go look at something. Nehemiah chapter 10. All right, if we got to get there, Nehemiah chapter 10. All right, not too dark out here now. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 32 through 34. I hope I got this right. All right, now, and it says, also we made ordinances for us to charge ourselves yearly with the third part of a shekel for the service of the house of Yahweh Elohim. Right? For the showbread and for the continual meat offering and for the continual burnt offering of the Sabbath, of the new moons, for the set feast, and for the holy things, and for the sin offering to make an atonement for Israel and for all the work of the house of Yahweh. And we cast the lots among the priests, the Levites, and the people for the wood offering to bring it into the house of Yahuwah after the house of our fathers at times appointed year by year to burn upon the altar of Yahuwah, our Elohim, as it is written. Now, as you see, here's another charge right here, right? And we just got done reading Joshua chapter 22 and 3, right? Did we? I think we did. Let me go look at that real quick. Uh, no, we did. Let's go look, let's go look at Joshua chapter 22. Yeah, I, I ain't really feeling that good right now. Don't matter. We're gonna fight through this thing. Joshua 22 and verse 3. You have not left your brethren these many days until this day, but have kept the charge of the commandments of Yahweh thy Elohim. So you get now, and now you so I'm trying to give you guys examples so that you have a better understanding of these words. But these are very important. Now, Torah is word number should be H number 3384, law, direction, and instruction, right? Jeremiah 23, verse 1, and then verse 22. But if they had stood in my count, then they would have announced my words to my people and would have turned them back from the evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Who would have took his, his counsel, right? Uh, come now, this is what he said. I, Isaiah, come now, let us reason together. You know, your sin be like scarlet. They're going to be, I can make them white as snow. So your instructions, right, or your Torah, Right, or your law is more valuable to me than the end of gold and silver. Psalms 119 and 72. See, his counsel, his instruction, his word, right? All right, now, 
so uh, Torah, we know as law and instruction, counsel is H number 3245 to found, fix, establish, lay a foundation. Also, it's advice, especially that given formally with wise counsel, appreciating in value, not depreciation, right? Appreciating in value. Advice, guidance, direction, instruction, information, enlightenment. This is what this is what he's trying to tell you. If you would just listen to my guidance, my instruction, my information, my enlightenment, not these men, not the precepts of these men. What you getting from me, what you getting from Ab Yahuwah, the father. What you, that's what he's saying. What you, I'm Ab Yahuwah. What you get from me? That's take that. Take my counsel. Let's go to Psalms. Psalms 119. I mean, we don't even look at Psalm 119. It laws all over the place for that. Psalm 119, 104 through 106. All right. It says. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it that I may, I will keep thy righteous judgment. See, I'm just trying to throw all these different things in here so that you can see. Keep on. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Yahuwah, according to thy word, except I beseech thee. The free will offerings of my mouth. See, see, often could be your mouth is a free will offering. That's why we praise Yahuwah, right? O Yahuwah, and teach me thy judgment. My soul is continually in thy hand, yet do I not give thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have I err not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as heritage for forever. For they are the rejoicing of my heart. See? This goes on and on. Go to your feet. Go to a feast. Chapter 5. Verse 13. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13 through 17. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever does make manifest is light. Wherefore he says, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. Tell man, come up out of these graves. And uh, Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, right? Carefully, not as fools, be as wise. Now, don't let these people trick you at your salvation, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of Yahweh is. <laughs> and be not drunk with wine, where is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to Yahuwah, giving thanks always for all things unto Yahuwah and the Father, right? Ab Yahuwah, in the name of our sovereign Yahusha HaMashiach. Boom. I don't know what else, but what more should I say? It's all over this book. Do not add to what I command you and do not subtract from it, but keep the commandments of Yahuwah, your Elohim, that I give you. Boom. See? But Yahshua did it, right? Because it's not the same commandments. Revelation 22, 18 through 19. I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, Yahuwah will add to him the plagues which are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Yahuwah will take away his part from the tree of life, the holy city, which are written in this book. So it's not just the commandments, right? It's, just, it's the prophecy as well. Be careful when y'all telling these people don't read these prophets. <laughs> you don't got to do that no more. But that's taken away too. So you taking away the truth or the revelation from these people. Be careful. Because guess what? You ain't going to eat of the, uh, the, the leaves of the tree of life to heal yourself. Because you ain't going to even get in the holy city. And outside is dogs and all these other folks that's sitting out there. It's that simple. It's real plain. Now, here's some other key words we got to get. I want you to be able to understand these as well. I know this is running a little, little long, but it does. I don't care because we are gonna finish this. <laughs> we are gonna finish this now. No key words to remember when reading Paul's letter. 
this will be our cheat sheet to help us navigate his hard to understanding world so we can be careful not to twist them as others do. So you see, this is specifically, again, more cheat sheets. Now, I don't know, I'm not telling you to do this, but I remember what I would do back in the day when I was just learning these things. I would go take this class, right? I would screenshot this stuff and go print it out and have me a little book. So when I start reading Paul's stuff, and I see that, I, oh, okay, I, oh, that's faith, okay? Faith, to listen to obey, to yield to, comply with, uh, to trust, have confidence, be confident. The just shall be uh, live by being obedient, trusting Yahweh and being confident of his promise, right? Now, we went to Hebrew chapter 11. I mean, we can see that faith would be action, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let you do that. But you will see with all these different instances that faith was actually uh, 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 an action word. The action, the things that have to be done, work. These people were doing work in Hebrew chapter 11. And by the work that they was doing, they was being justified. So righteous, D number 1349, righteous was observing divine laws in a wise sense, upright, righteous, virtuous, keeping the commands of Yahuwah. You a virtuous woman, that means you observing divine law. You want to be upright, that means you are righteous or righteousness, divine laws. Right? Genesis uh, 7 and 1, Proverbs 10 and 30, 1 Peter. Let's go look at 1 Peter uh, 3 and 12. I'm trying to get through these. I just don't really know. I'm feeling real weird right now. I hope I'm all right. Uh, I know I'm all right. Y'all got me. I ain't even, I ain't even worried. I'm going to finish that. Whatever you're trying to do, brother, you can't do it. I'm going to roll through this. Yeah. Yes, sir. Whatever y'all decide to do, I'm in his hand. God, you got to believe. All right. Now, let's go to First Peter 3 and 2. First Peter, did I say that? No, 3 and 12. Sorry, y'all. For the eyes of Yahuwah are over the righteous. All right? So, what is this word righteous? See, over the righteous, righteous observing divine laws. <laughs> For the eyes of Yahuwah are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of Yahuwah, uh, face of Yahuwah is against them that do evil. So even when you want to get your prayer through, you gotta be keeping these commandments. I can show you uh in Proverbs it says that the uh the Prayer of the wicked is an abomination to him. So you just down there wasting your time if you ain't keeping these laws. I'm just telling you that. Now, if you want me to take you there, I can. I can take you right to the scripture, right? Go to 1 Timothy 1 and 9. 1 Timothy, flip over one page, a couple of pages. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man uh, of Elohim, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. See? We don't, we're going to be worrying about this money, right? But that's what they have you doing. If you're righteous, you're still going to be just because we just got done reading before. you going to take care of it. Now, Let's look at this word just, H6663. Just, lawful, righteous, and make righteous, turn to righteousness. Okay? So if you ain't righteous, you, uh, if you lawless, you need to be lawful and turn to righteousness, right? Go to Proverbs. Let's see, Genesis. Oh, I missed Genesis. Well, let's go to this. We, we backtrack on the Proverbs. We're going to be in Proverbs. We're going to hit them all. I don't care. I'm going to hit them all. Let's go to Proverbs 3. We're going to walk all the way up. We're going to walk all the way up. Everybody. Everybody walk. Way back. Okay. Proverbs 3 and 33 says, The curse of Yahuwah is in the house of the wicked, but he blesses the habitation of the just. Again, somebody that's lawful. All these words, this is what that's all you're gonna see. It's all over the book, but you got a cheat sheet now. Right? 
Now, let's get uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 10. 10 and 30. Put this thing to you, baby. Make it real easy for you. Proverbs 10 and 30. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. So if you're lawless, you're not going to inhabit this earth. You're not going to do it. You're going to die the second death, as we showed you on the last class. Let's go. All right. Now, let's go to Proverbs chapter 12 and 21. Let's see something. Let's see. Let's see something else while we go over there. Let me find that scripture real quick. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Let's see this here. Um, what did I say? Um, oh, Proverbs. Uh, 12 and 21. Um, lying lips are an abomination to Yahweh, but they that deal truly are his delight, right? All right. Now, let's look at some of these other Proverbs chapter 15 and 9. The way of the wicked is an abomination to Yahweh, but he loveth him that follow after righteousness. Boom. Observing divine laws. It's just all over this book. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to Yahweh, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. Right? Let's see. I'm trying to find this other one for y'all. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go right here. Proverbs 28, 9. He that turneth away his ears from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Wait. Whoa. Wait a minute. He that turns his ear away from hearing the law, he that hear, turns his ear away from hearing righteousness, he that he turneth his ear away from being just, even his prayer is an abomination. Now, deal with that. All right. Now, we cover this board. Let's go to the next one. Now, again, this is another cheat sheet for you. See, how much Brother Saul wants you to be successful? See, Brother Saul trying to help you get in this kingdom. See, because I'm telling you, this is the stuff that's going to help you diligently. Right? E number 1567 to seek out, investigate. You can't take these yoga words for this stuff. You got to investigate them. You got to investigate the scripture that they give you. They scrutinize them. They seek out for oneself. Beg, crave. How you, how you begging? How you craving? Are you praying to Yah? Help me with this, Father. I'm trying to understand this. I want to get in your kingdom. Reasoning to seek in order to find out. See, by thinking, meditate, reasoning to inquire. Go to Exodus chapter 15. Brother Saul, try to give you the boss stuff. Get your boss, baby. You just gotta, you gotta accept it and then you gotta scrutinize me. You gotta seek, seek it out for yourself. You gotta reason with it. You gotta seek it. You know what I mean? You gotta meditate on it. You gotta reason. You gotta inquire. You gotta ask your pastor some of these questions. <laughs> or you can get kicked out like I did. And, and said, if thou would diligently hearken to the voice, see, again, Exodus 15 to 26, so if, that, if you would scrutinize or investigate, meditate on it, seek it out, diligent, hearken to the voice of Yahuwah thy Elohim, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give me into his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am Yahuwah that healeth thee. You want to get healed? You ain't got to go to uh, uh, Johnny Popoff or whatever his name is. You ain't got to go get no secret oral from the Mount of Olives and, or, or, or the, uh, 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 the secret uh, uh, a sliver of the cross and send nobody no money. Just do what he tells you to do. See? Being upright, righteous, just, right? It's being righteous, just to esteem right. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 26. You know what I mean? I <laughs> It's all here, y'all. It's all here. And I keep telling y'all, show some of your kin folks this stuff. Don't be afraid. They get mad at you, so what? You never know. They might look at it one night when ain't nobody around. The way of the just is uprightness. Thou most upright dost weigh the path of 
just. See? Well, he's going he gonna to weigh it out. He's he looking at you when you're doing right. Now, ungodly is H number 7563, wicked, guilty of sin, against God or man, against Elohim or man. That's what it means to be wicked or ungodly. That's what that means. So you're guilty of lawless. So we know sin is a transgression of the law. First John 3 and 4, guilty of sin, right? And what comes along with that, with being wicked? It's H number 7451, misery, unhappy, a person's thoughts and deeds, problems all the time. And you can't figure out why you keep having all these problems, why your kid's crazy, why your marriage ain't right. How come you can't get along with folks on your job? All these things. Because you're not keeping these commandments, you're not diligently seeking out this book and picking it up and reading it. And you're not trying to walk up right. Now, let's look at the flowers. Psalm 89, righteous and justice are the foundation of your throne. Come on, Johnny, get it over with, baby. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. Probably don't want to have a couple of drinks. So he usually don't do that. It's nighttime now. It's pitch black out here. The Shabbat is in. So I just got back. So I, can, I can dig it. I used to do that. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, Yahweh. They rejoice in your name all day long. They celebrate your righteousness. They celebrate your laws. He will call out to me, you are my father, my rock, my Elohim, my savior. Malachi 3 and 6, for I am Yahuwah, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Because if I change not, if I did change, and I had emotions like, y'all, I ought to kill all of y'all by now. <laughs> Let's go to Proverbs chapter 30. <laughs> yeah, man. This thing is beautiful. You know what? Even though I don't feel good, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do one more class up here tonight. I don't care. Proverbs 35 through 6. Because I'm in y'all's hands. Every word of Elohim is pure. Right? Remember last week we said that by every man shall live by every word that come out of his mouth. Because every word of Elohim is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And, and, th and thou not word unto his words, lest he reprove thee. Add thou not unto his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. So we've been proving all this time that uh, it's some liars running around here. I will not violate my covenant or alter what my lips have uttered. This is this other part of Psalm uh, 89. So this is what he's saying. So not only do he is he not going to change, he ain't going to violate the covenant, even though you do. And whatever he came out of his mouth, that's what it's going to be. We went through these before. Many teach that Elohim's uh, laws are bondage, are they? All right? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Be not entangled again in the local yoke of bondage. You can look at this Isaiah 61 and 1. You know what? I can't do that. I can't show a change. Let's go to Isaiah. This is what this is what the Mashiach said when he came. He said, the spirit of Yahweh is upon me because he uh because the sovereign has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to let them out that are bound. Bound by what? Bound by sin and Hasatan. So he came preaching the commandments. That's the liberty. This is what he was talking about. So Jeremiah 16 says, oh, this is, I mean, it's all over this book. You just got to have somebody to show you how to get to it. And now y'all going to be able to show somebody how to get to it because somebody showed me how to get to it. But you turned and polluted my name and caused every man his servant and every man his handmaid whom he has set at liberty and their pleasure to return and brought them into subjection to be unto you for servants and for hand. I mean, so, and this is some other underhanded stuff that was going on in Zedekiah, in Zedekiah's time. He was doing a whole thing. He put the people back in bondage. You see, uh, the thing about it, uh, the laws of liberty was disobeyed. See that? Yep. Therefore, thus say Yahuwah, you have not hearkened unto me and proclaiming liberty unto everyone his brother and every man his neighbor. 
Uh, behold, I, uh, behold, I proclaim a liberty for you, says Yahuwah, to the sword, through the pestilence and to the famine, and I will make you to be removed into all the kings of the earth. So this is what happens when you're not telling the truth to the people. It's the same thing. We just got to show you some of these other things, some of these other classes in this series. They're going to pay for this. Go to Luke. Go to Luke. Chapter 4. I say so. I got. I mean, I was knowing how. Right now, every time I did stupid stuff and some of the stuff I had to pay for, so I already know. I rather get mine now, though. I mean, you know. I mean, you know. Whenever I do do something stupid and I'm getting paid for, I rather get paid then. But later on, ain't gonna be good, right? Again, we see the same thing here. And she actually just breaking down Isaiah 61 and 6. 61 and 1. Psalm 1844 through 45. So I feel I keep that law continually forever and ever. And I walk at liberty. Why well, seek that precept? Like you can't hold me half the time because I'm walking at the precept. All right? The law of Yahuwah, Psalms 19, is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahuwah is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of Yahuwah are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahuwah is pure. And this is what enlightens your eyes, because this is what you get the Ruach HaKodesh for. Now, how can something perfect be made better? But we see laws of Elohim bring liberty. But from what? Liberty from sin. Prove that. Bond is what it is, okay? Romans 7 and 23, Paul said, I see a different law in my members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind, making me a prisoner of the law, the law of sin, which is in my members. 2 Timothy 2 and 26, they, they may come to their senses, right? This is what he's saying. So I'm hoping that y'all that's up here that ain't doing this right now, that you'll come to your senses and escape from the snares of the house of time, having been held captive by him to do his will. Because when you refuse to keep these commandments, that's who will. You obey in house of time's will. John 8 and 34, Yahushua answered him, truly, truly, I say unto you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. That's why you can't don't want to keep these commandments because you're caught up in your lust. You're lawless and you like them, doing the lust of your flesh. Second Peter 2 and 19, promising them freedom. Why to themselves these pastors are slaves of corruption? For by what a man is overcome, by this he is enslaved. So whatever your habit is, whatever you like to do that's lustful, you're a slave to it. That's why you keep doing it. And believe me, we see that sin because some of these habits and lust things, but some of these lustful things people have, we know it kills them. Acts 8 and 23, I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bondage of iniquity. So iniquity, you in the bondage of it. You can't break free. Only the commandments is going to break you free. Because I don't care if somebody put oil on their hand and slap you upside the head. You're going to find yourself doing the same thing because you don't have nothing to show you what is right and wrong. Do you not know that when you present yourself to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness. Romans 16, and having been free from sin, you uh, became slaves of righteousness. Why? Because you started keeping the commandments. Now you go, because you're going to be a slave to somebody. So now by, by keeping the commandments, you become slaves of Yahushua. And guess what? He already told you. Take his yoke upon you. It's, it's not a burden, it's light. See? He'll he a good master. Now, Isaiah 53 and 5. Let's go there. Got one more slide after this. Isaiah 53 and 5. I'm hoping y'all get some out of this class. I try to help y'all as much as I can. I try to give y'all good stuff. But he was wounded for our transgression, right? Our lawlessness. He was bruised for our iniquity. That's when I, we would just didn't even care about trying to do right no more. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That's what that's talking about. Go back to Isaiah 42. I'm trying to show you what that means. Come out for the new people. This is a, it's a new class. So I mean, you know, right? The spirit. Uh, Yahuwah have called thee in righteousness. He called you in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes of the 
to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison, right? See, it's just that simple. So this is, as Hebrews, this is what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be out here helping these other nations. He's he going to hold us. I mean, you know, Yahushua is the one holding us by the hand, and we got his hand, we safe. That's our big brother. He walking us to school. And then in turn, we're supposed to be bringing light to the, the rest of these people. But what we doing? We got them doing everything else but this. They got me, they rapping now, the commercial, you know I me mean? pants sagging, head to the back, you know I me mean? talking like, you know I me mean? everything. All the evil that you come up with, they do. But it's supposed to be the other way because you see how they influence by the music. And I don't care what it is, right? John 8 and 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. What is truth? It's the commandments, it's the law. And you will know the commandments, the commandments will make you free. That's what he really saying. Once you know what truth is. See. Last slide. Now, of course, these are cartoon characters when I was a kid. When I was a kid, these were cartoon characters. And it says, what the hell? And it says, don't, okay, now this is what Snidely is saying. I don't know, some of y'all younger people don't remember this, but some of these old people that might be up there remember these two jokes. All right, don't listen to that dude good or does he do right. You can't keep that old dog on his on his she I can, you know, moo ha. It's bondage, I tell you, bondage. You hear that all the time. But then Dudley is saying, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where Christ has made us free, not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein. So Schneidly, uh whiplash represents the law of sin and death, right? And Dudley do right, the law of life and the world of life. I hope y'all got something out of this. I hope y'all learned something from this. I hope we got a little bit uh, closer to getting more better understanding. So with that, I'm gonna say shalom, everybody. I pray that the Father keeps you. Again, Father. Forgive us for our wickedness. Watch over us. Watch over our family. Please shine your face on us, Father, and keep us. We praise you for another uh, Sabbath day. Shabbat shalom, everybody. I hope you enjoy your Shabbat. And again, I love y'all. And can't wait to see y'all again. Pray for me, y'all. I need y'all prayer. Peace. In Yahusha's name, I pray. Hallelujah.